Hi students and welcome to this introductory lecture to Art History Survey 2, 1304. So this is the second part of a two part series. Um, some of you might be taking the first part at the same time, but many of you have probably taken the first part before, perhaps with me or with another professor. Um, but I still wanted to uh, give you a nice little welcome. The first two weeks are going to be online as per STC protocol. Um, so we will just be here meeting online, um, not at the same time. I'm not gonna make you come at a specific time, but rather I'll be posting lectures like this one throughout the first two weeks that you'll just watch. I'll be posting all the material and you'll go through it at your own pace and then you'll complete the assignments um, uh, on time. And then of course we'll resume by meeting in person in a couple of weeks. Um, so I'm Melissa Terry. I will be your professor for this class. Uh, some of you might've met me, some of you maybe haven't. Uh, so nice to meet you. Uh, here's the Blackboard platform. Um, this is the new Ultra Blackboard. So this is my first semester using it. It might be new to you as well. So we'll work on it together. Um, it's pretty uh, straightforward, thankfully. So right here, you see the Start Here page. We'll start here first. Um, here's a little welcome note. Of course, this is Art History Survey 2. So it's going to basically start around the 1300s um, up to the present uh, period. This is a lot of time to cover. So just so you know, um, it's going to go relatively fast. There's a lot to cover, but we're, we're going to do what we can. Um, this is where I'm going to be posting the lecture that I'm creating right now. Um, before we get into all this stuff, let's go down and talk about me. Um, if we were in class together, I would uh, share a little bit about myself and then expect you to share a little bit about yourself. Um, this is what's going to be facilitated through the online introduction discussion forum. I will be reading those and you'll get full points, of course, if you did it, um, but I'm sure we'll also when we get together in class in a couple of weeks, we'll probably also go around and say our names just because it's uh, makes much more sense to do it that way uh, to get to know each other in, the, in, in a couple of weeks. So uh, I am Professor Terry. I'm actually from Minnesota, so basically Canada. I have um, my grandpa was Canadian. Um, I moved to the Valley in 2016 when I was eight months pregnant and then had my first daughter soon thereafter. Um, I have two little girls now, one is four and one is five. Um, I uh, got my studio degree in art, uh, in undergraduate degree, as well as in art history. So many of you I know are studio art students, so you're artists yourselves. So I do have that background. I have a degree in drawing and fiber arts. Um, I also have a degree in art history, and then from there I went on to do my master's degree in art history, moving away from the studio side, and um, I did that in Milwaukee in Wisconsin, and then I slowly moved south, right, and then I went to the University of Illinois for my PhD, and I did that in art history. Um, now I'm here. Oh, I love living here. I think it's so nice, wonderful, warm, sweet people. Um, I have two little girls. I have a young dog, two-year-old. Um, Mutt from the Humane Society, and um, my spouse also teaches in the history department. Some of you might have taken classes with him, um, and I also teach yoga on the side. So that's just a little bit about me. Uh, I'm going to be reading through the discussion forum. Um, that's one of the things that's due this week will be the introduction discussions. So some of you already posted in here, um, but that's how I expect to start to get to know you before we start classes uh, in a couple of weeks as well. So that's a little bit about me. Now let's go back to the required textbook. There is a, a textbook required. Here's the front of it for this class. This is a new textbook that I just started using. Uh, it is the History of Art, uh, volume two. So it starts in the 1300s and comes all the way to the present. It's called a global view, uh, which is something that we will talk about this week when we talk about the canon of art history. This, the canon, many of you probably already, already heard this term. This is basically just the a set of works that have kind of been decided to be the most important uh, artworks throughout the history of art. Um, these have been typically uh, artworks by men and typically artworks by um, white men, so uh, excluding women, excluding people of color until recently. And so books like this have a more global perspective where they're, they're more inclusive, uh, including these populations who have been historically left out of the canon of art history. And this is something that you'll dig into this week in your first week readings. 
Um, I just wanted to mention as well, anyone who's taking this class, uh, the 1303, at the same time as taking the 1304, you're going to find the first week has some overlap. So um, typically, uh, just in case you're a student who's taking the second one first, I still like to have you read about the canon of art history so that you know uh, what it's about and why courses have been organized um, in such a way that they become survey courses and the problems inherent with that. Um, but I do like this new textbook because it offers a more broad perspective and really includes uh, um, other art makers who have been historically excluded. How can you get the textbook? So uh, here's a couple ways you can have access. So one, this is what most of you will probably end up doing, is getting the $50 ebook access. It's available through the publisher. You can click here and type in your information and get it instantly. And then you have it all semester. Um, you can also get a paperback book if you're interested. I actually have uh, the huge double survey here, which is insanely huge. Um, but the um, you can you won't be needing this. Um, you'll only be needing half of it for this course. So um, you can get this uh, online through the publisher, not this one, but the one you see there, volume two, um, for $150. If you're one of these people who likes to have the hard copy, uh, and if you have some extra um, financial aid money or something, uh, or if you wanted to put some of that money that you got free uh, to enroll this semester towards it, you know, it's up to you. Um, many of you are art students. When I was an art student, I remember liking having a big, huge art book <laughs> to look through, um, but I completely understand if you'd rather do the e-version, much cheaper, um, you know, and I know that's kind of what people like these days. Anyway, uh, you can also find the book on Amazon, so you can go there. It's about 150 there too. Um, if you end up getting a book through the publisher or on Amazon and having it shipped to you, make sure you do quick shipping. And I would also recommend starting with the 21 free uh, day free trial. So you can click here to get the free trial um, while you're waiting for the book to come in. So that's an option as well. You will need access to it next week. We will not be reading, let me think, we won't be reading out of it this week. So you have some time, but we will need it next week. Assessments and assessments and grade scale. This is what you're going to be graded on. So really, it's only six things, um, but they, uh, a few of them encompass a few things in the semester. Uh, the first is a research paper that'll be due at the end of the semester. There will be two exams, 50 points each, one around halfway, one around the end of the semester. They are non-cumulative. A mock trial, um, if you've taken an art appreciation class with me, you know I like to do this mock trial, um, but many of you haven't because um, that is a non-art major class. Um, so we will do a mock trial in class with 50 points. You will be giving a group presentation with uh, one or two other people on an artwork later in the semester worth 50 points. Discussions, uh, so uh, each week we'll be doing discussions. Uh, online discussions will be taking place these uh, during week one and week two. Um, However, once we start going back together in class, class discussions will take place in person in class, and you'll basically have a discussion uh, uh, during class, and then you'll turn in your notes and get full points. So once we come to class, you don't have to worry about the online aspect, um, but right now these will be taking place online. You'll also be asked to do an art zine. So a zine is like a small magazine. It's like a small little handmade book. So uh, you'll make it out of a piece of paper, you'll cut it and fold it up and use your artistic skills to create a little book. Uh, and these books will be about an artist of your choice. And I will talk much more about that later in the semester. So those are your assessments and here's the grade scale you'll be that I'll be using. There's also a course schedule posted here so you can see what we're gonna be doing each week. Some important dates at the bottom. So for instance, if you look to week one, this is this week. Um, we're doing introductions, uh, thinking about Blackboard and how you use it, uh, thinking about why we should study art, and then questioning the canon of art, right? That set, uh, th those set artworks that uh, are supposed to be the most important. Um, and then the second part of this week, because obviously we would typically be twice, we'll be talking about uh, are the art of the late Middle Ages in Italy. Now, this is a little bit before your textbook starts. So for that reason, we're not going to use the book this week. All the readings will be from online, and then the lectures uh, will supplement that. All right, so that's the start here tab. We already went over this one. And now we can go ahead and check out the syllabus. Uh, all the things that I've just looked at for you are also in the syllabus. Um, you can look over this at your own 
pace. I do have office hours. Um, right now it's gonna be online because we're all online. But once we get back on campus, I do have an office in the Pecan building. Why? This is also the building our classes will take, um, take place in. So you can find me here Tuesday, Thursdays from 11.15 to 1, um, and also be online Tuesday, Thursdays, 9.15 to 10 a.m. Um, if you're going to be visiting me online or in person, I recommend sending a message to let me know so that I can prepare if necessary. You can look over any program uh, learning outcomes. Um, the core objectives, this course is in the core, so that's really good. That checks off an extra uh, box uh, for um, the curriculum you need to graduate. Uh, critical thinking, communi communication skills, social responsibility, and teamwork. These are all things that make sure that this class is in the core curriculum. Grading criteria, I just went over these, but they're listed here as well. Major assessments, again, if you wanna read specifically about each one, I have them listed here. The textbook, we just went over it, but again, information in the syllabus. Everything has to be in the syllabus. Uh, course topics outline, again, we just looked at it in Blackboard, but it's also listed here in your syllabus. Institutional policies, these are gonna be the same for most classes. Uh, you can look over these and let me know if you have any questions about them. The one I will uh, look at closely is the COVID-19 statement, since it is new. Um, if you come down with COVID-19 during class, um, you have to go to, uh, we're asking that you go to South Texas College's COVID-19 website and uh, um, report that you have COVID-19 so that you can get uh, clearance, you know, to come back to campus and uh, so that you can, then they will contact me and let me know that you have COVID-19 and then I can give you the necessary uh, assignments so that you can work from home while you're quarantining. So um, this is an option that's available to you. Please don't come to class if you're sick. Um, and if you have COVID-19, please do uh, fill this out. Attendance policy. So this class is not a hybrid class. It is a fully in-person class. That means you are required to come to a minimum of 26 classes out of the 30. That means you can only miss basically four classes. So that's two full weeks still without any, um, you know, you don't have to reach out to me uh, if you're missing one or two. Uh, once you get to your fifth class that you're gonna miss, you really should reach out and let me know what's going on. Um, but four classes are free, no excuse needed. Just, you know, if you, if you have to stay home to take care of a child or a grandparent or um, if you're sick yourself you know take the time that you need um, and let me know if you need anything from me um, uh, it is your responsibility to contact me though if you're going to be gone uh, so obviously if you just your alarm doesn't go off you, know, you don't have to contact me just skip class that day and get to know someone else in class and get uh, information from them about what happened and what you missed um, uh, but once you've missed four absences, your grade will begin to lower. I do expect you to reach out to me if you notice that you're about to hit your fourth uh, absence. Um, I won't be reaching out to you to warn you that you're almost done with your four absences. This is your responsibility. This is a good transferable skill, right? Making a commitment and then doing uh, coming to class. So um, please let me know if you have questions about that, but it should be pretty clear. Academic integrity, this just means please don't cheat. Uh, no plagiarizing, uh, no working with other people if you're not supposed to be, right, these types of things. Uh, let me know if you have questions about that. Uh, late work policy, I do not accept late work in the class, uh, but all assignments you'll have ample time to work on. So if you ever fall behind or need help with anything, please do just reach out. If you need to turn in something late and you have a good reason for it, I'm more than happy to accept it late. Um, but if you are just going to start not doing the work and then turning in, if you end up at the end of the semester being turning in a bunch of work that's super late and you never reached out, I can't give you credit for it because it's not fair to other students. So if you do need extra time, just reach out, just be transparent, let me know. I'm super nice. Uh, so I wanna help you uh, to do well in the course. Um, an important note about emails, here's my email address. You can also send me a message for, via Blackboard. Uh, please write your full name and your class section in your message so I know who you are. You do not know how many messages I get that are completely random and uh, the student doesn't say their name or who they are and they send it from a random Yahoo or Gmail account and they don't tell me what class they're in. I'm teaching six classes this semester. So please, when you write an email, please, please, please at the very beginning say, hello, Professor Terry, you know, give me a greeting. Um, my name, this is blah, blah, blah from 1304 class. And then here's my question, right? 
um, be formal in your messages, be thoughtful and um, make sure you use punctuation and full sentences. It should go without saying, but many of us have become so tied to texting that we forget to do these things. So please, please, uh, it's old fashioned, but please do that. Um, demeanor, this, is, uh, this statement is just to say, uh, many of us in the class will have differing perspectives. We come from different, uh, uh, we come from uh, different, um, uh, you know, we're different people. So we're all gonna come to the class and looking at things differently. Um, always be open uh, to other perspectives. Um, always, if you're critiquing someone else's idea, make sure you're critiquing the idea and not the person, right? Be mindful, be kind to other people, even if we disagree. Um, we can learn from each other by disagreeing with each other. So that's an important thing to know. Sensitive subjects, um, there will be nudity in this class. Basically the history of art, early history of art should be called the history of naked people. Um, it's not meant to offend you. It is just part of the curriculum. So if that is something that you have an issue with, um, uh, you can drop the course, um, but uh, that is just part of the curriculum. It's never meant to, uh, to offend you, but you will see a lot of nudity in the course. And that's all for the syllabus. So let's go back to uh, the course page. Again, you have the assessments posted. I'm just covering my bases and really posting everything here and there. Again, the late work and attendance policy, another copy of the course schedule, as you see here. And then you have the course content, and this is where you're gonna find weekly for folders posted each week. For the first two weeks, I will post week one and week two. Once we get into class together, uh, the online aspect of this course will be minimal because we'll do everything in class. But sometimes there will be online things that I will be posting, but for the most part, it's only going to be these first two weeks that we really uh, emphasize the online aspect. Within the week one folder, you have a unit over overview and a to-do list. The overview, this is what's going to happen, the intro to Blackboard, why study art, unpacking the canon. And then the second part, because of course we would be meeting twice, so there's going to be two folders associated with this first week. The second part will talk about the art of the Middle Ages in Italy. Um, and then here's what you are being asked to read. Uh, this essay by Ma uh, Mark Miller Graham, it's about the canon and this will help you to think about your first discussion form, which is called Unpacking the Canon. And then also please read these two links. This is the Black Plague, it's a website, uh, Smart History, and they talk about the Black Plague, which will give us a little bit of something to think about when we're thinking about the art being made in this period. And then also read Florence in the Late Gothic period. These, uh, both of these will supplement uh, the lecture that's posted for this week as well. And then it says what two things are due. Well, by Sunday night, so for these first two weeks, everything's gonna be due on Sunday night. I'm opening the folder now, you have all week, you can do it whenever you want, you can do it today, you can do it Sunday night, um, but it's gonna close at midnight on Sunday and that's when I'll start grading, okay? So these are the two things that are due, introductions and then discussion one. So, so that's the overview. And then you also have two folders, the weekly material folder. This is everything you're supposed to look at and the weekly assessments. That's all the things you're supposed to do. The weekly material has two uh, documents inside of it. One is for the first day, which typically, you know, we'd have two days of class. And the second is for the second day. The first one covers why does art matter and unpacking the canon. Here you have an outline of what the learning objectives are, what you're supposed to read, you can open this essay, The Future of Art History and Undoing the Survey uh, here, and then also view this lecture, which is on the canon. I will note that it is a lecture by myself, but it is a few uh, years old. Um, I do mention in other um, a different textbook that's about 80 bucks. So disregard that. This is recycled from an earlier semester. Um, so if anything seems odd, or if I'm talking about something that doesn't make sense, uh, just disregard it. Um, it will talk about the essay that's due. It will talk about the canon, uh, all that good stuff, okay? Um, and then that's what you're going to base your discussion one on. I'm also asking you to look over these two videos, Why Look at Art and How Art Can Help You Analyze. And then the second folder has more learning objectives, two readings that I've already shown you. These are just links to smarthistory.com. And then there will be a lecture that I'm going to post later in the week. It will be posted here, a panorama, which is super cool, uh, looking at a really interesting, um, the Palazzo Publica. Uh, so you can actually look around uh, in this really cool space. Ooh, 
that we're going to look at. Uh, we'll talk about that in the lecture as well. And how do I get back? Oh, I think I don't know if that went to it. But anyway, um, you can click on that. And then there's a couple uh, important videos to watch as we prepare to move on to the next week's material. So that's all that's due for the week. And once you're done, when you, once you've looked through everything, you'll go ahead and do the two assessments, the discussion form, which you can do right now, clicking on it. It asks you to tell me about yourself, something interesting about yourself. A few people have already shared, so that's wonderful. And um, you can click here to click uh, to respond. Uh, these are all worth five points. Basically, if you do it, you're gonna get five points. But I do want you to actually share something um, substantial, right? Don't just be like, Hi, my name is Melissa and I like to eat. Welcome to the course, everybody. That was silly. But anyway, you know what I mean. So uh, the next one is discussion one, unpacking the canon. It covers a bunch of, uh, it covers all the things that um, uh, come up in that essay and the first the week one lecture on the canon. So make sure you read that and watch that before preparing this discussion. I want you to write at least 150 words. Each student has to reply to two other students. This is what makes it a discussion form. And that reply should be about a hundred words. So I only have this minimum because I don't want you to just reach out to other people and say, cool, uh, I like what you said, good job. That doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't actually discuss anything. So it doesn't, it doesn't exchange any ideas. So what I want you to do is try to respond to other people by saying, oh, I really like that you said that. That helps me to think about this. Um, this is what I think about it, and this is why this is interesting to me, right? So please do that uh, by Sunday night. And that's the first week's assessments. The first week is not supposed to be super crazy. Uh, you're supposed to be trying to get your book, uh, doing a couple discussion forms, doing a little bit of readings, looking at some videos. Um, but, you know, that's about it. The additional reading, this also uh, is going to be at the end of the semester, we'll be reading this one. Um, so you can disregard it now. But as for now, that's all I have to share with you. Um, anytime I post announcements, they'll be given to you via email, but also posted here in the announcements tab. Uh, there is a calendar at the top. Uh, here's the discussion form. There is a grade book. So you'll start to see these populating um, as soon as I grade them. And then of course you can send me messages here as well, or you can click on this little um, envelope next to my name to reach out to me. Please do let me know if you have any questions. I look forward to meeting you in person in a couple weeks. But uh, as for now, we'll do this and um, let me know if you need anything. Thanks guys, have a good week.